Many of these airports have been built in the most remote parts of the world, often hundreds of miles from the nearest source of supplies. Such an airport is Sharjah, on the south coast of the Persian Gulf, midway between Basra and Karachi, a section of the Indian-Australian route which crosses the marshes of the Euphrates Delta, the sun-baked deserts of Arabia, and the barren wastes of Baluchistan. 1,700 miles of desolate and almost uninhabited country over which our airliners fly as safely and regularly as we take our daily ride to the office. Sharjah is a hot, desolate spot on the edge of the South Arabian desert. The airport has its own engineering shop, radio office and meteorological station. In charge is a European station superintendent. The airport is built in the shape of a square fort as a precaution against possible but improbable raids by wandering tribes of Bedouins. Two miles distant across the glare of the desert is the Arab city, until recently a center for pirates who were active up and down the Gulf. Sharjah is still peopled by Arabs of the same Jawazmi tribes, by religion fanatical Wahhabis, but today it is ruled over by a sheikh who is friendly to the British government. To the city come camel caravans from Muscat, Hannah left Bari in at 8.30, GMT, Captain Robinson in charge. With today's wind, she should be here about 5.30. If she's at all late, Mr. Smith, we'll need flares and floodlights for night landing. Will you please have them ready? Yeah, I'll see that's done. And Wilcoxon, would you ask the aircraft for the names of the passengers? Okay. Abbas Khan. Six subs coming tonight. Sorry. I'll come and inspect the rooms in half an hour. Sorry. Airplane coming half past five. Both at Chasse. At once preparations begin for the arrival of the airliner. She is eastbound for India and Australia, four days out from England. <laughs> Provisions are brought from the storehouse to supplement local supplies. Living rooms are got ready and beds made up because Sharjah is a night stop. All through the hot afternoon, Arab merchants have brought parcels of pearls for shipment by air to dealers in Bombay and Calcutta. In the days before the air route, pearls were sent by sea or by long journey over land. But now the native merchants always make use of the airliners to carry their wealth. From now until the airliner departs at dawn tomorrow, the station superintendent will have no time for leisure. He must inspect the bedrooms to see that everything is in order, supervise the food and attend to a multitude of other details. Outside, on the airport itself, another part of the organization is at work. The mobile beacon is wheeled into position. The 6,000 candle power floodlight is uncovered in case the airliner should be delayed by headwinds and so just fail to make charger before sudden nightfall. Mobile petrol pumps are got ready so that the refueling of the airliner's tanks can begin the moment she lands. The radio office in the fort keeps in constant touch with the airliner as she approaches down the gulf. Net! Surface wind and barometric pressure, please. Right. Surface wind northwest 8 miles. Barometric pressure 10, 14.2 millibars. Wind northwest 8, pressure 10, 14.2. Thanks. In the cool of the evening, Half an hour before sundown, everything at the airport is ready for the machine. The Persian petrol boys pass the last few minutes with a game of cards. But their ears are alert for the aerodrome bell, which is the signal that the airliner has been sighted. Chala, chala, gandhi gaya. 
The Arab guard provided by the Sheikh turns out to open the gates of the compound. If anything should happen to the airliner, each man is liable to be punished in Arab fashion by the loss of eye or limb. in the fort are preparing to eat and sleep, the engineers out on the desert aerodrome are beginning to overhaul the airline. Through the gathering dusk and far into the night, the work of testing the engines and checking the controls goes on. The first stage of tomorrow's flight is a 450 mile hop across empty desert and shark ridden seas. Weather conditions must be discovered. A balloon is released from the roof of the meteorological station. A small electric light is attached to the tail, and from observations of the speed of its ascent, the force and direction of the wind at different heights can be calculated. Information of the greatest importance to the pilots on tomorrow's run. Dawn breaks over the desert. 